What are we doing here, Simon? Having a bit of fun in the sun before it starts raining again. We're stripping up cedar weatherboard. And just do this a little bit here for a start, and then I'll show you what we're doing. So what we've got here is a cedar weatherboard and it's got some failed finish on that's um, driving the owner nuts. So the first thing we do is we spray on the stripper and we keep it wet with the stripper. As you spray, waft your hands, just don't do full big squirts like that. As I was a run, you'll break the triggers. Do just nice wafting action, less stress on your wrist. You won't get cramp in the hand and your triggers will last way longer. As it um, needs a bit more stripper, as it looks a bit thirsty, we'll put some more on. It's about, I don't know, about 10 minutes ago when we started putting it on. So it's had about three light coats of stripper and it's now raining, but that's all right. So, like the one above I started with. So we think it's a lovely day. And then it all goes crap. So Simon, we're next to an aluminium window here. Yes. Just hang on a moment, I'll get down there. If you're doing aluminium and your aluminium is powder coated, then you must mask it. This is, um, have a look up here, this is anodized, um, and you need to be sure it's anodized because if it is anodized, then it won't be affected by the stripper, which is good news. So it comes away really quickly. We're often asked about brushes. People see a small brush and think therefore it's going to take forever. Um, the reality is, is the small brush has big advantages over a big one. Let me explain. Next time you see a stiletto shoe, notice that all the a huge amount of pressure goes onto one little point. And so a lot of people say don't wear stilettos on that nice polished wooden floor. For a big flat sole will spread the pressure out. So if I get a big brush, I'm not going to, I'm going to have to push really hard to get it into the grain, like this up here is, is very, very um, corrugated, and so to get into there, and even like these, this type of surface here, I can very quickly zip around there with a smaller brush, because I can zip around, and even though it's, it's skinny, it's still about two inches wide, so when I'm going on to, so when I'm here, I'm onto the thin part, and then I just bring it around onto the wider part are there. If you've got someone next to you using a big brush, they will be exhausted quickly and they'll um, do a worse job. This is way faster than you'd imagine. It's got a brass bristle. Okay, so there's those ones there. So we've taken off what's on the wood. Um, and what we want to do now is take out what's in the wood. This is where my hat comes in well. This is what those hats were made for. So, the rain will go in about a quarter of an hour. And all day. So what I'm doing here now is stripping what's in the surface. This is part two of our guide. And we Again, just waft it along as we go. I think the rain adds to the ambience. So if you've got any projects out there, anyone you know with anything, just send in photos. Get us give you a call if you want. And everything that's gonna finish on, we can find a way for you to restore it. And our big game always is no sanding and 
if you were to sand this surface you'd lose all the corrugations that are part of the weatherboard and you'd ruin the whole game. How would you, if you were sanding on this, you'd have to take off a huge amount of surface and a lot of people's weatherboards are wider than this and what happens is the, the, the six inch board often uh, cups, they, they warp a bit and again if you were to try and sand that you're on the hiding to nothing. This doesn't lose any of the wood surface. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this for probably five minutes to, um, to, to soak. We're looking for the uh, finish that's in the grain itself. Often you'll think you got it all out but the stripper goes into the wood. Being pH neutral it's not going to damage anything but what it does is it um, it just drags out the, um, the finish that's deep in. When the first coat of, of the finish was put on, pretty much most of it just went in deep. And this is the one we're getting out now. This is the, probably the most important one to get. Yes, you want your new finish to succeed. Um, so getting rid of what's in the grain, be it paint or, or another oil. It's critical. Now, so we'll just zip on down. Sorry about the glare, guys. Rainy again shortly. We've got lots of cedar out there getting hammered by the weather and the sun. This is such an easy way of getting it got to. A lot of people just resort to painting over top, but they don't realize they can actually recover the surface easy as. Also, as I was saying before, with boards that sometimes warp, you don't have to replace your weatherboard. This will work with those undulations. Amazing how much finish just keeps pouring out. So that's part two, and now we're up to part three, the final part, and we don't have to take a break for that one. So, what we're going to do next is rinse the surface. We don't like water or anything that contains water because it's just a grain raiser. Got myself a clean brush, so that's the pretty nice new brass bristled brush. It's not too coarse so we don't want to tear the wood apart and we've got our blue one this time. This is our flusher so we're spraying and we're scrubbing straight away. We don't leave it like the stripper has. We don't need to stop filming because we need to give it some time. The, the flusher. Ideal isn't it Simon to flush it while the residues are soft because it's easy 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 that way. We know if someone's not flushing straight away because they run out of flusher and they ring us for more flusher and we know ah they are probably leaving flushing to another day and all those residues go hard and it takes way more flusher to do it more elbow grease you see the color changing so we spray we scrub we spray again and then we grab a rag, old toweling's really good. See that wet colour? <clears throat> that's the colour that this board would be should someone clear finish it. So that's your starting point when you're looking at your colours, not the dry, dried off colour. Pretty easy into the corners. These brushes are just brilliant for getting into there. If you use thinners, It'll dry really, really fast, dragging finishes back into the grain and also highly flammable. Also alcohol type fin um, flushes like, um, like meths, they again dry really, really fast. This um, paraffin spirit gives you a bit more time on the, on the scrubbing side, stays wetter longer. 
and there's also is it a way higher flash point so way safer to use so the whole point is the residue is easy to mobilize onto a rag now no doubt in the comments somewhere along the line we're going to get more ones advising me to use garden sprayers um, the problem with garden sprayers is the stripper destroys the seals in them and we're always looking at new seals and things but you'd be surprised how much surface you can get over with a with the triggers that we have you can only work on so much at a time anyway okay Gray, it's interesting we've been doing here. A lot of these um, pieces here have had a bit of gray from the sun and they've all been disappearing with the um, with the process. And so this is the same method as you'd use on decks, cedar front doors. There's a whole host of cedary projects. Um, garage. Yeah, garage doors. And we've knocked out half a square meter in pretty quick time. We could have done a square meter if I could have been bothered. Product wise you'll use for a litre of stripper will probably get about two square metres stripped. Um, volumes change from project to project. The homeowner said I could do as many samples as I wanted. The amount of undulations in there, can you imagine sanding it all out? But anyway, cheers, thanks for tuning in.